Next up, we have uh, Mike Jones and Craig Stubing. Hello, uh, I'm Mike Jones uh, from the USC Libraries. Hi, everyone. I'm Craig Stubing, uh, the digital media producer from the USC Digital Repository. We're here to talk about a project uh, we've been working on for a couple years now. And the goal is to use AI to build bridges between people through conversations. And our hope is that through these conversations, we'll build a more understanding and more empathetic world. It's called interactive interviews. So interactive interviews are real-time conversations using pre-recorded videos of real people. I'm going to say that one more time. So they are real-time conversations you have with pre-recorded video of people. How it works is you come to our website, interviews.usc.edu. You ask a question out loud using natural language. And then our conversational AI agent searches the entire interview, finds the best answer to your question, and plays a video clip of that back to you instantly. What this does is it allows oral histories uh, to be much more accessible. Rather than having to sit and watch a six to 20 hour video to find the answer you want, you just ask, you get the answer you want. And for those of you who think it would be easy to just download the transcript from Whisper and Control F and find the answer that you want, you lose a lot of the emotion uh, that people bring to their own stories. So uh, in addition to making the actual oral history more accessible, it also brings it to more people. Anyone with a web browser connected to the internet on their phone or computer can go to our website and interact with the people we've interviewed. Uh, and just to reiterate, none of these responses are generated or altered by AI. They are actual videos of people we've recorded during an interview. So how do we make this? Uh, it starts like a normal interview. We write a bunch of questions in advance, uh, general questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What are your kids' names? But then we do a lot of research on the interviewee and ask specific questions based on their experiences, ones that anyone would want to know um, about them. We then bring them into a studio, and we film their answers one at a time, just like a traditional interview. Uh, if they stumble or don't like their answer, we let them take it again, and we only use the best response. Then we transcribe that uh, and take the question and answer pairings, and we use that to train our conversational AI to understand the interview. And that's where my role ends and my colleague Mike's begins. So uh, getting into how the website works, there's three main components. We have the public facing user website, the back end system, and then third party external services. So the whole thing brought, begins when the user asks their question. Uh, we've just recently uh, incorporated text input as well to be more accessible for those that may not be able to speak or not feel comfortable with that, or maybe uh, you have a lot of problems with normal transcription software that doesn't capture your voice well. So this is gonna be released soon, but in this example, we're doing a uh, spoken question. So uh, the audio stream is transcribed using a speech to text service, using a service called DeepGram. Uh, we've tested a number of them. It seems to be one of the most um, accessible and broad and understanding folks with accents that are native English speakers. It does really well at capturing non-traditional English words, specific locations and other named entities, which is really, really important when you're having these conversations. Uh, once that question is transcribed, simultaneously displayed on the screen for the user to see their question, sent to our conversational AI agent. That agent then returns the best matching answer, as Craig mentioned, and that answer contains two main components, the video ID and the text of the response. So the video ID triggers a uh, video to play from uh, Amazon S3 service, plays on the screen while simultaneously showing the uh, transcript so that you can read along, or if you're hearing impaired, you can read instead of just being able to hear. So a little bit about the answer retrieval process. Uh, I, you know, Mike, like many uh, natural language processing systems, this relies on the concept of embeddings. These are numerical um, representations of uh, the words that we speak. So this allows the computer to perform a number of operations and us to algorithmically find the best answer based on the criteria that we prefer. So we have two different algorithms. One is a question to question. So if I ask something like, who are you? It's gonna look at what was the original question that was asked to the interviewee. That might be, what is your name? And then it also compares that question to the answer. And this is really important because in a lot of these answers, um, more complex, longer answer, the interviewee may give something that 
rambles a little bit or answers multiple questions at the same time that that original question may not necessarily address on its own. Something very simple would be, when were you born? And maybe they say, I was born on August 5th, 1984 in Brooklyn, New York. So now that question actually, or that answer actually asks two, addresses two separate questions. And this allows that to capture that in case I say, where were you born? It also knows that that's the correct answer where it normally wouldn't necessarily match to that. So we find that this incre uh, encourages uh, empathy through two different ways. One through engagement, and this is what I like to call the sort of choose your own adventure approach. I'm sort of dating myself, I'm sure, but I know many in the audience remember those books uh, where you would flip and sort of choose your own adventure. So as Craig mentioned, you may have a six, eight, 10 hour interview, and I'm only interested in a couple of things, maybe uh, the understanding where someone grew up and, and learning about their father. And so this allows the, the user to just focus on those portions and jump around the interview and just find that part and sort of, sort of follow those threads as they go. The other one is through empowerment. So if you've ever had a difficult conversation with someone, especially a stranger, you know how awkward it can be to ask something really personal or something that's maybe traumatic. A lot of these folks have gone through very, very traumatic experiences. We interviewed Ilyasa Shabazz, which is Malcolm X's daughter. She talks about her father's assassination and the impact on her family. As someone in the first time meeting her, you may not feel comfortable asking about those traumatic events, but asking her through the website it sort of offers a slight level of disconnect to feel comfortable, but you're still hearing her voice, hearing her emotion, and getting that response for her. Also, for the benefit of the interviewee, they only have to answer this once, and they can literally have thousands, hundreds of thousands of these conversations with individuals, but only have to tell the story once in a safe environment where they feel comfortable with. So journalism is often called the first draft of history, but what happens if journalists get that story wrong or it's incomplete? Well, that's the mission of the USC Annenberg Charlotta Bass Journalism and Justice Lab, who came to us and they said they wanted to create an interactive oral history collection of people who have been at the center of our nation's uh, most pivotal moments in social justice. So we're going to have a video example of, Mike mentioned Dr. Ilyasa Shabazz, Malcolm X's uh, daughter. We want to kind of show you what the user experience feels like uh, for you. Trying to avoid the like challenges of a live demo, but on the technology, there's always something. So thanks for bearing with us. Recognizing, nicing, 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 nicing. So. I know we're short on time, so let, let's imagine we're asking a question here. You can see the question being transcribed. Yeah. So in this case, uh, how would you like people to remember your father, right? This is, what was your personal perspective of your father? And you can see Ilias is speaking. We can't hear her voice, but you can see the transcript of her answer comes up on the screen while she's also speaking. So I, I promise you she is speaking. Craig spoke the question. Um, but for the sake of time, we're not going to waste everyone's time doing the audio troubleshooting. So, um, we encourage you all to have your conversations at interviews.usc.edu. Uh, we'll be branching out and adding more conversations as we go. And uh, happy to hear any questions and feedback when the time comes later on. Thank you all.